from around the world and from our newsroom in Washington, this is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Good evening. Keeping up with the debate over defense strategy has never been easy, but tonight it appears to have been turned upside down. As President Reagan unveiled his new nuclear strategy yesterday, the Republican chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, John Tower, said it represented less than Jimmy Carter had proposed. Well, today the hardliners were siding with Tower, while some compliments for the Reagan plan came from longtime defense doves. The sticking point, the president's decision to put the new MX missile in the underground silos that during the campaign, Mr. Reagan called vulnerable to surprise attack. More from Jim McManus. To support his decision to scrap the massive MX shell game basing plan, the president employed arguments advanced by some of the severest critics of an expensive new generation of nuclear missiles. And in that one stroke, Mr. Reagan stood the strategic nuclear debate on its head. Defense doves, who were appalled when Ronald Reagan made it to the White House, are delighted, giving Defense Secretary Weinberger credit for finding the least costly solution to a problem they insist never existed. I think that Secretary Weinberger must have looked at the list of needs and figured, okay, we've got to make some tough choices now. So rather than pouring 50, 75 billion dollars into an unworkable solution to a non-existent vulnerability problem, I think he's come up with a sound program which leaves him funds that he can utilize to bolster up such things as our rapid deployment force capability. The hawks, including heavyweight Democrats on Capitol Hill, who were counting on Mr. Reagan to challenge the Soviet military buildup across the board, are spoiling for a fight. The basic problem that we face is the vulnerability of our Titan and Minuteman missiles. What we're doing now is to put a bigger missile in a smaller missile hole so it becomes a bigger target. Perhaps the administration has some new discovery that relates to hardening of the sites that has not been revealed. And we will certainly be asking questions about that. But right now, I'd have to be put down as very skeptical. The President and Secretary Weinberger argue that the Amex decision is part of a broad nuclear strategy, but critics see it as a sharp and confusing reversal of defense policy based on the administration's public arguments with itself. I would uh, feel that simply putting it into the existing silos would not answer two or three of the, of the uh, concerns that I have, uh, namely that these are well known and uh, are not hardened sufficiently to be, uh, uh, nor could they be, uh, to be of uh, sufficient uh, strategic value to, uh, or count as a strategic uh, improvement of our forces. The silos into which those will be put, the MX as they come off the line, will be hardened silos. Pentagon sources question whether the Joint Chiefs of Staff will support the new plan wholeheartedly, at least until they see how the political winds blow in next week's congressional hearings on the Reagan nuclear strategy. Jim McManus, CBS News, Washington. There were also mixed reviews today from Tucson, Arizona, where some of the first new missiles will be based, and David Dow has that. Nearly 20 years ago, when the first 18 Titan missiles were installed in silos outside Tucson, Arizona, it caused little stir in the area. Many welcomed the economic stimulus, the chance to contribute to the nation's Cold War defenses. But Tucson has tripled in size since then, its suburbs sprawling ever closer to once remote missile sites 25 to 60 miles away. New communities have sprouted next to two of the sites, and the possibility of having a new generation of missiles at some of these sites produces mixed feelings. I think it's a very frightening thing and something that I think everybody in this area should become very concerned about. It certainly makes us a target area. And that Tucson uh, logically was a target all along, and why would the, the deployment of MX missiles and silos here make it any more of a, a target than it was in the past? Arizona's aging Titan sites have become more visible in the public mind since last year's accident at a silo in Arkansas and a minor accident at a site near Tucson. Some see the solid fuel MX as a welcome substitute. If they're going to replace the MX missiles, the MX is a good one. It doesn't have that, that fuel leakage problems. It's brand new and we really, uh, uh, we look at that as a positive situation rather than keep these aging missiles around, keep the community uh, a little upset about that. But Tucson's Democratic Congressman, Morris Udall, thinks there's a better alternative for his district, no missiles at all. 
I'd rather they put them somewhere else. Uh, they, they are supposed to be in rural areas, so that it's just a military target and not a, not a, uh, a civilian target as well. And I react that we've done our share. The prospect of more jobs at Tucson's davis monthan Air Force Base doesn't carry the economic cloud it once did. This is no longer a one-industry city. And though the president is popular among Arizonans, he would still face a sales job, though perhaps a successful one, in convincing residents to live with the Amex and at least tolerate it. David Dow, CBS News, Tucson. While attention was being focused on nuclear weapons today and high-speed delivery, some U.S. troops were training for conventional low-speed warfare. The military held a mobilization and deployment exercise today, starting at Camp Blanding in northeast Florida. It was a joint Army Reserve National Guard exercise four hours and 15 minutes later. They all rolled into the port of Jacksonville, and the trip ended. But in war, that would have been the beginning of a journey overseas. On mornings like these, I can't let minor arthritis pain or its stiffness stop me. So I turn to the warming power of Ben Gay. Ben Gay warming power works fast. I rub in Ben Gay and feel that good old warming power deep, right where it hurts, breaking up pain and its stiffness for hours of relief. No wonder Ben Gay's America's number one selling arthritis rub. It's got warming power. When arthritis pain grips you, break the grip of pain with Ben Gay. Tomorrow proudly presents the Canon A1, the A1, the camera that takes you to the outer limits of your imagination, the A1, so ahead of its time. It's designed with five automatic exposure modes plus manual, versatility to capture your most creative compositions. The Canon A1, precise, effortless, the Canon A1, now the possibilities are endless. Still another complication has developed in the administration's plan to sell AWACS radar planes to Saudi Arabia. Earlier, there were efforts to overcome Senate opposition to the sale by placing the planes under joint command of U.S. and Saudi pilots, but the Saudis turned that down. Tonight, the Saudis say they will accept no American partnership in operating the planes. The IRA hunger strike campaign in Belfast that was begun last March by Bobby Sands ended today. The IRA said the strike was no longer an effective weapon of protest. John Blackstone has the story. ...inside the prison walls as Republican prisoners campaigned for special status. But in recent weeks, the protest began to crumble. Five hunger strikers were saved from death by the intervention of their families. Two others came off the protest for medical reasons. It's taken the first real lives. break came in July, when the mother of Patrick Quinn gave doctors permission to save his life. I think the people who had said they'll have to do more to try and bring pressure on the British government because it's not fair to leave it all to the boys and say they've suffered so long. This week, families of the remaining six hunger strikers decided they too would intervene. Because of that, the prisoners themselves announced today they were ending their fast. The protest began in March when the convicted IRA bomber Bobby Sands began refusing food. Sands died in May and became a martyr of the Republican cause in Northern Ireland. Through the spring and summer, nine more hunger strikers were given heroes' funerals. As well as showpiece funerals and demonstrations, the hunger strike also brought violence to the streets. In the past seven months, there has been a dramatic increase in the deaths of soldiers, policemen, and civilians. This has been Northern Ireland's most violent year since the mid-1970s. And in the past year, there have been two hunger strikes. Republican leaders said today they hoped the British government would not force the prisoners into yet another protest. Last December the 18th, after the first hunger strike ended, the British government claimed victory and cheered loud about it, and it set the seeds for another hunger strike, and I hope that that never happens again. For seven months, the hunger strike was a battle of wills. Through ten deaths, the prisoners and the government were equally determined not to give in. Finally, it was those on the sidelines who brought the protest to an end the families who could see no point in more men dying. John Blackstone, CBS News, Belfast. 
The hunger strikers uh, have sympathizers in this country, and for some of those supporters in New York, despite the end of the strike, today was business as usual. Steve Young has that story. Pro-IRA demonstrators have turned out in New York every day since the start of the hunger strike. And just a few hours after the announcement that the strike was over, several hundred Irish and Irish Americans again gathered before the British consulate in what had become a familiar ritual. The committee coordinating demonstrations in about 80 American cities is called Irish Northern Aid. It claims that even though the prisoners in May's prison did not win political status, the goal of the hunger strike had been achieved. The hunger strike has won a victory long ago in terms of world opinion, Irish opinion, and Irish American opinion. And regardless what Margaret Thatcher does or does not do, no matter what concession she gives or does not give, it will not matter. The hunger strike is of one. A few blocks from the demonstration, in Clancy's bar, Bobby Sands and other hunger strikers who died are revered as martyrs to the Northern Irish cause. I know the prisoners wanted to carry on with it, but I'm glad to see this thing ended, really, myself. Hate to see loss of life. They've already gotten the um, greatest propaganda value out of uh, what they did, and uh, I feel very strongly that uh, they should not go any further with it. Leaders say that though the hunger strike has ended, their demonstrations against the British will continue, but not every day. Steve Young, CBS News, New York. Images. Reflections of reality. Today, Zenith System 3 is close to bringing you the perfect image. With the sharpest picture in Zenith history. With four speakers for superb fidelity. With 112 channel capability, including 42 cable channels. Zenith has never been closer to perfection. System 3 from Zenith. The quality goes in before the name goes on. Who needs Dr. Scholl's air pillow insoles? You do if you work with your feet. I walk all day long. Without Dr. Scholl's air pillow insoles, I quit. I hardly take a step, but I couldn't do this without my air pillow insoles. Thin enough to slip comfortably into your shoes. And heavenly soft to cushion every step all day long. Who needs Dr. Scholl's air pillow insoles? Just about anybody who hasn't got them. They broke ground in San Diego today for a big new Navy hospital, a hospital that a lot of city residents claim is the wrong size in the wrong place. Terry Drinkwater has that story. The Navy brass turned out for today's groundbreaking ceremony. The band played on, but it had to compete with demonstrators who then kept on the other side of the fence. They and many other San Diegans don't want the biggest hospital the U.S. military has ever planned to be built here in their Balboa Park. They argue it would bring traffic and crowding. Would New Yorkers want a $300 million complex of government buildings in their Central Park? Only the animals in Balboa's famed zoo seem oblivious to the controversy. The Navy shows off architects' drawings and argues most of the hospital will be hidden by trees. Sections of the old hospital on an adjacent park site are 1920s vintage. No one disputes it's time to build a modern hospital. But why not on the edge of town, on this parcel of land the city offered? No, says the Navy, we want the new buildings to be next to this existing facility, which won't be demolished. In the event of a conflict, which we always have to prepare for, that particular facility is a major expansion facility for casualties in time of crisis, uh, time of war. The Navy emphasizes it will give much of the old hospital property back to the city, though they'll keep the admiral's houses with their commanding views. The oldest parts of the hospital are already being torn down to make way for the new. But the project may still be stopped. Opponents have gone to court arguing on environmental grounds that it's a bad place for a hospital because landing jets make so much noise. And besides, it's near an earthquake fault. The issue was submitted to the voters in 1979. The Navy put its proposal on a ballot and the San Diego voters rejected the Navy's proposal. And that clearly shows the political hypocrisy of the Reagan administration because you remember Reagan said on television before the election that he wanted to get the federal government off the backs of the people. 
The government counters, putting the hospital here is a matter of national defense preparedness. The courts will ultimately decide. Meanwhile, the Navy is going ahead, clearing what was once parkland. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, San Diego. In New Orleans today, there was a funeral for a hospital, one of several public health service hospitals around the country that have lost federal funding because of budget cuts. And in New Orleans style, it was a jazz funeral. <laughs> Well, this was the week that a lot of federal programs were laid to rest or reduced, while more budget cuts have been requested by the White House. During campaign 80, Bob McNamara paid several visits to Mansfield, Ohio, to see how candidate Ronald Reagan was doing with the critical blue-collar vote. Well, he went back this week to see how the blue-collar voters feel about President Reagan now. Here's his report. The big industry, blue-collar Mansfield area, gave Ronald Reagan almost 60% of its votes last November. Hi. We're with CBS. We're taking an opinion poll. Which and this week, when CBS News polled more than 270 auto workers at Mansfield's General Motors plant, we found that 70% of those who said they voted for Mr. Reagan are still bullish on the president. I think he's the best commander-in-chief we've had since Ike Eisenhower. I think he's doing a good job so far myself. Yet, when we asked not just the Reagan backers, but everybody to rate the president's performance, Mr. Reagan's economic plans may have cost him support. Here, 47% said they didn't like the job the president was doing, while 39% approved. 13% were undecided. I think it's too early to, you know, say you done right or done wrong yet. A lot of confusion over whether the president's done a good or bad job seems to lie in his proposed budget cuts. So far, they're just confusing to me. I'm just standing, you know, wondering what's going to happen next. Already, Mansfield has gotten a taste of what the budget cuts may bring. The police department has lost four jail guards because the CETA job training program was canceled. A $7 million plan to modernize the sewage treatment system could be shelved if federal EPA money is cut off. And Mansfield's bus system could be in jeopardy if mass transit funds don't come through. But while it's true the president's spending cuts haven't cost the city of Mansfield much yet, and despite Mr. Reagan's promise that his budget cuts won't alter the social security system, many of the people we polled do not take the president at his word. What he's gonna do for us is what he's gonna take from us and give to the, the wealthy people. I've been paying this thing for uh, 45 years now, or 50 years anyway. I think, I, I, I think I'm entitled to get some of that back before I croak. Still, Janet Coe has improved her opinion of Ronald Reagan since last year. And her husband, John, a lifelong Democrat, thinks better of the president, too. Last fall, as the Coes watched the Carter-Reagan debate on television, they were sold on Carter and voted for him. But now... I'm not going to be a Reagan fan, but... I think he's trying to do something, whether I agree with it or not. Knowing what I know about him now and what I did then, I definitely would vote for him this time instead of Carter. Mansfield's unemployment lines have shortened slightly since Ronald Reagan's election, the unemployment rate dropping from 13% to 10%. But employment officials say there are more jobs now because of a seasonal trend, not because of a change in the White House. And in this big labor town, union members are not looking to Mr. Reagan to be much of a friend. You can't be a friend of the working man and big business at the same time. He has no concern for the working man. So the president is paying a price. His popularity now appearing to soften more and more the longer the blue-collar workers who helped elect him remain uncertain about whether his budget cuts will threaten a chunk of their paychecks. Bob McNamara, CBS News, Mansfield, Ohio. When we tell you Michelin Radials last and last... Well, that's no surprise. When we tell you Michelin Radials save gas... That's no surprise. But when we tell you you can get Michelins for about the same price as other leading radials... Now that's a surprise. But it's true. We're America's fastest growing tire company. We make the tire you need at a price you can afford. See your Michelin dealer and prices set for your car. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Michelin. We put America on radials. Oh, that soup must really hit the spot. It does more than that. 
Hey, have you seen the good news about soup, Sonny? No, no. Oh, it's in a lot of magazines and newspapers, huh? Oh. What the nutritionists are saying, how nutritious soup is. Look what it says in this magazine. Shows what I always knew. Soup is good food. Hey, you better run along and get some hot soup in you, Sonny. You're soaking wet. Stir up the camels. Soup is good food. President Reagan's plan to halt illegal Haitian immigrants on the high seas is stirring up a lot of controversy, and much of it is in this country. A report tonight from Eric Ingberg. The Haitians fleeing what one federal judge termed the most repressive regime in the hemisphere are perhaps 2% of the illegal immigrants to America. But Florida, where most come ashore, sees them as such a burden that the state's governor, Bob Graham, was in Haiti this week, seeking the cooperation of dictator Jean-Claude Duvalier in stemming the flow. Graham also saw some of the poverty which has caused 1,000 Haitians a month to come to the U.S. Now, as a symbol of its get-tough policy on illegal immigration, the Reagan administration is sending the Coast Guard to the coast of Haiti to turn back Haitians headed here. Under an agreement with the Duvalier government, one Coast Guard ship will be sent. Enough, backers of the plan say, to send a signal to Haiti and to American voters. Every congressman in this place when he goes home, is met by people who say, what are you boobs going to do? When are you going to get off your can and do something about illegal immigration and people who take my job and took my kid's job? The administration extracted a pledge from Duvalier that those turned back will not be punished. That is crucial because federal courts have blocked past attempts to deport Haitians on the ground they face prison or worse if they return. Under U.S. laws and treaty obligations, the Coast Guard will still not be able to turn back Haitians who ask for political asylum. But Haitian rights advocates doubt the proceedings can be fair. It appears that this practice violates domestic laws, which provide, for example, the people seeking asylum have a right to a full and fair opportunity to prove that they would be persecuted upon return. Certainly that cannot be accomplished on board a Coast Guard cutter in the middle of the Caribbean. Congressional supporters of the Coast Guard complain it is already suffering from budget cuts and will be further overtaxed. They note the first cutter assigned to the operation, the Hamilton, has a history of engine problems caused by lack of maintenance funds. The administration expects legal challenges to the program, which was not approved by Congress, and will claim the president has broad powers to halt illegal immigration, even on the high seas. Eric Engberg, CBS News, Washington. Jazz singer and pianist Hazel Scott has died of cancer in a New York hospital. She was 61. Britain's Prince Charles is finding married life more expensive than his bachelor days, so he's granting himself a 50% tax-free raise from the million dollars a year income he gets from the farms he inherited in the Duchy of Cornwall. Charles has been keeping half the money and turning the rest over to the Treasury. Now he'll keep three-fourths of it. That's Jane Russell, starlet, full-figured then and full-figured now. And today we gals know how to keep our full figures looking pretty. Under the smoothest fashions, try the Playtex 18-hour seamless bra. Not a seam showing to spoil the smooth look. And the unique fabric that stretches for real support, real comfort in the 18-hour bra makes 18-hour girdles control comfortably. Try Playtex 18-hour bras and girdles. Full figures never look better. The United States Postal Service handles 300 million pieces of mail a day. Well, that's their job. But that doesn't mean you have to put your important business letter into that pile. Now you have an alternative. Introducing the Federal Express Overnight Letter. It costs only $9.50 when you drop it off, and it gets delivered practically any place in the country overnight. Absolutely, positively. The American doubles team of John McEnroe and Peter Fleming won their tennis match against Australia today to put the United States in the Davis Cup Finals against Argentina. Well, maybe this summer's baseball strike had something to do with it, but a CBS News New York Times poll taken last week suggests that football has taken over as the national pastime. Forty-eight percent said they'd rather watch an important football game than a baseball game. Only 31 percent said they'd pick baseball. Even more surprising, American football is making inroads in Europe, where until now, football has always meant what we call soccer. Richard Wagner has that story. We beat people just playing clean football. 
All right? Yeah. yeah. So, let me have 10 seconds. Quiet. Just quiet. The coach's pregame pep talk is right there with the flag, mom, and apple pie. But this isn't America. It's Soling in West Germany. And until recently, for most of these players, football meant short pants and a round ball. But American football is gaining a toehold in Europe. Okay. Everybody ready? Hey! Everybody ready? Hey! The German-American Football League began a year and a half ago. There are 14 teams in the league. This game matches the Cologne Crocodiles against the Soling and Steelers. We have gone from crowds of 100 to 150 up to crowds of seven, 8,000 people. Current league rules permit five Americans on the field at any one time. Next year, that number will be cut to just three. Most of the Americans are U.S. servicemen. The coach of the Cologne Crocodiles, one of the league's powers, says his German players are coming on fast. I've even got some German kids who can play better than Americans. The German kids like to hit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't be out here if they didn't like that. I mean, this is it's a contact sport, and everybody knows that. American football, I think it's hard. It's, if we play it right, it's fair, and it's a sport for men. It's a very it's physical too. game, a lot yeah, of hitting. Do you like that? I like hitting, and I like contact. Uh, it's the only sport I enjoy. Eh? The Crocodiles quarterback, American Chris Williams, says all kinds of Germans are discovering American football. We've got world-class athletes. We've got judo champions, motocross champions, uh, handball players. They just come from all walks of life, and they really like to play the game. So you've got the basis and a good start for any football team. The Soling and Steelers are still looking for a permanent stadium, and this game drew just a few hundred spectators. But the small crowd had no effect on the players' enthusiasm. There was even a fight. At the end, the Crocodiles prevailed and went into the playoffs. For the Steelers, it's all over till next year. Good game, man. The Germans still have some things to learn. The marching band showed up at the victory party instead of at halftime. The National Football League doesn't really have to send scouts over here anytime soon, but at post-game parties, the Crocodiles are close to all pro. Richard Wagner, CBS News, Cologne. That's the news. I'm Bob Schaefer, CBS News, Washington. Good night. It was a mystery to us how she could live in these practical times, yet still retain a certain sense of style and flair. Her 1982 Cutlass Supreme, for example. Her roomy, comfortable Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. How were we to know that that Cutlass was really a reflection of her practical side? It certainly didn't show. But she knew. Even today, there's still room to do it with style. By now, almost everybody's heard about the incredible Black & Decker Workmate. About how it makes almost any hard job a lot easier. Like planing, hammering, sawing, almost anything. But what most people don't know about the incredible Workmate is now you can get a single height model for as little as $50. Wow! That's right. A Black & Decker Workmate for about $50. That's really incredible. From around the world and from our newsroom in Washington, this has been the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. In the booth, the best announcers. On the field, the most exciting coverage, plus the most complete pregame and halftime report. Sundays, more people are watching the NFL on CBS Sports. This is CBS. From the time the first settler stepped on this shore, he felt the need to create shelter, to protect himself from Indians, the harsh elements, 